Hey guys, and welcome to another Nom Talk Live where it's guests that come and join and we eat noms and talk about noms. But today we're going to talk about things that are a little more specific, I guess. It's kind of like a sub branch of something. But we're talking about mental health and wellness and nutrition. And we've got nutritionists, holistic fitness. And, and just, we are, we're just really excited because this is a, this is a very sensitive topic for a lot of people and it's, this is going to be an informative talk. <laughs> just, it's, it'll be very informative. Um, you know, like if, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and let's go ahead and introduce the guests. I, you, I mean, like, look, if you've, if you've watched Nom Talk Live, you already know who our guests are, but we're just going to do a little refresher for the newbies. Hi, newbies. <laughs> but to my right, oh, sweet, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Yes. To my right, we have Reiko, who is a fitness uh, coach. She's a nutritionist. She's a nutrition coach, nutritional coach, nutrition coach. <laughs> <laughs> but she's also a song composer, a musician. She's done composition for Man in the High Castle. Uh, that's on Amazon Prime. She has a band called Lolita Dark. And she had a band called Dig Jelly that I think is just kind of like on vacation. Everybody's just doing their things and exploring life. And she's a very strong animal welfare advocate. Ms. Rico, hi. Yay. Alina here. <laughs> Everybody's getting back on the, in their daily lives, so the internet's going to be a little more, but it's okay. Alina here is a holistic nutritionist. <laughs> she is the founder of Wellness Con. She has a shop called Oral Line Shop, which has a restock of planners, by the way. Bow, bow, bow. But yeah, she's, oh, thank you. <laughs> she's big on YouTube. She is the person that you want to see on YouTube when it comes to new moons, half moons, full moons you know what meditation like she is oh, so... calming videos check them out that's all i have to say yes yeah hi alina thank you <laughs> hi very hi. happy to be here and um <laughs> no that that was awesome thank you you know I, I i really appreciate it and i'm very grateful that you invited me on and um you know my fellow panelists here are dope ass people and i'm really excited to just I'll honestly sit back if I can and, and learn from them because yeah but thank you for having me yeah of course and below is my okay I've, I've, I've decided to use a new title for you Raven okay so a Raven the plume, a moniker Raven, <laughs> she is the Jill of all trades she's a fashion designer an artist a painter cooking influencer podcaster she is the mama to like an ecosystem of wonderful things she is my yeah. crown of culinary. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but we we are we are talking about uh, mental health and how mm -hmm. wellness and nutrition can def can like impact you and it can help aid and assist. Just to for more for for mention for for forewarning the thing disclosure. We are not health professionals. <laughs> we are only giving you information based off of our wisdom, our experience, and our studies of our mm -hmm. of our personal studies. So, just bear in mind. Okay, moving on. Let's start. Grains of salt, in other words. <laughs> I was like, grains of salt. Like you can you can take us seriously, but we advise that you just work with your personal health care provider. Yeah, exactly. Also <laughs> work like, with before. professionals. Yes before mm -hmm. even considering implementing these things but it's always fun to learn so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes so we're really excited um let's start off with food because it's nom talk and we talk about noms and we eat during these talks and i think that's yeah. just a fun thing you know so let's go ahead and start with alina alina please tell us what do you have for foods Hello, I have, I was like kind of eating before, so it looks less, but I have kind of like a deconstructed taco bowl. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's helpful to kind of like make a bunch of rice and make a bunch of black beans and all the things mm -hmm. for nights like this where I'm like, oh yeah, wait, let me get my stuff together. So yeah. <laughs> That's so funny because it's, I had a rice bowl earlier and that was my mistake. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Rico, tell us what you're eating today. Um, I am pretty much 99% of the time I'm vegan, but tonight 
I'm eating wild cut cod in Japanese English way. Wait, what is、um, it again? I'm sorry, my internet went boop. Wild cut cod manier. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Sounds right. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, I uh, pressure cook the cod, and I completely research the best wild cod fish that I can find that's humane, sustainable, and、nice. because I don't eat farm raised stuff,、um, I want to get as much omega as as I can, omega three, and I pressure cook it, and I. Add Miyoko's cultured vegan butter. I melt it with put the organic parsley in there with the、uh, little bit of the green chili sauce. That's just the because、Ooh. I like it a little spicy, and、um, I would put the、um, the cod. But before that, I put the cod in the pasture raised organic. <laughs> Vital Farms eggs. <laughs> Sorry, I had to tell Vital you. Vital Farms. Yes, <laughs> they send me coupons now because I talk to them all the time. <laughs> and then I marinate、uh, and I put the、um, whole wheat organic breadcrumbs, and I saute、oh. it in the soy-free veganese from by Follow Your Heart, and、uh, lots of garlic, four cloves of garlic. I love garlic. Oh, yeah. And I you know drooling, right? And、yeah. then I have little spinach、um, pasta with. I use the、uh, polyphenol, polyphenol, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Moroccan desert、um, extra virgin olive oil, because it's got the the most the richest、um, polyphenol, 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 polyphenol. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and then I mix that with the、uh, organic balsamic vinegar, and that's it. And then I also have the、um, I grow my mushroom now, my own uh, uh, yeah, uh, organic oyster, pink oyster mushrooms. <sighs> and you can't get that at the store because it goes、oh, bad really quick. So my、yeah. husband and I grow it, and then I slice it,、um, and then I saute. I sent. I think I sent Stephanie the picture of the thing harvest, and then、oh. I'll. Make it with the、um, pasta,、uh, whole wheat pasta with、uh, mushrooms and garlic again. I love garlic, so that's what I'm having. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to <laughs> introduce everything that. That, I, that sounds <laughs> just amazing. It's really good. I had to take another bite of my food because it was making me hungry. Right? Oh my! <laughs> Legit. Like I was just like, oh my gosh! And I remember you telling me that you were gonna make that, and then you had mushrooms,、mm-hmm. and you sent me the pictures, and、yes. and I'll I'll put them I'll put them on the Instagram on our Nam Talk Instagram. But、yes. I went nuts because there is somebody that I follow on TikTok, and she forages、yeah. like. Yes, you know. Yes,、videos. I love her, and she like made candy out of mushrooms, and I was just sending these to Rico. Like, look at this, look at this, look、What? at this. What is like, insane? She goes、oh, in the wild she, in the she, woods, like in yeah, the she pickles、uh, uh, magnolia blossoms. I think it was she did recently. Oh my god, I know exactly who you're、so、talking、good. about.、Oh, she is、do. like the coolest vegan. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I love her. She's, she's so、amazing. great. Oh、she、my god, she has so many followers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she deserves it. She deserves it. She's she is absolutely wonderful.、Yeah. Love, 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 love her. Yeah. yeah.、Uh, Ray Raven, as you talk about what you made for food, I will Google her name again, and then I'll let everybody know because she's just oh,、yeah. I love her. She's, so she's amazing. Yeah. So Raven, <laughs> what are you no, eating today? I went with decently simple comfort food. I did a really nice、uh, sticky Japanese rice. I did a slow cooked braised、uh, pork rib. Um, and then I just added some snow peas because I like a little bit of crunchy and and veg to go with. And this is kind of what I do when I'm having a really hectic day. I just like it makes me slow down and calm. And now I'm growing ginger in one of my fish tanks so that I can have ginger braised pork because that's my favorite. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> that's so wild that you grow veggies in fish tank.、Yeah. I never heard that method. Yeah, it, it's called aquaponics. I thought it was hydroponics. Apparently, it's a little bit different since I'm purely using water and I'm not adding like a bunch of fertilizers and like other stuff to it because I'm just using water and letting it do its thing. It's called aquaponics, and so yeah, I'm growing basil, mint, ginger, and、um, I randomly I like to do sweet potato vines because. 
they really help to clean the air and they kind of bring a little bit of nature inside without me having to go outside and deal with nature. Is that what's yeah, that so all your this green that you can see going around my room. In fact, if I change my it's angle a little bit. It's freaking gorgeous. Yeah, all that <laughs> going around it's my so room it's like is, is live vine. And it's it's edible. You can actually take the leaves and you can cook with them. You can eat them. They are actually really wonderful and good for you. Um, the roots clean the tank really well. Takes out the nitrates wow. and nitrates. Makes the fish really happy. But yeah, like I have these, I have these wild vines that just kind of grow around my room now, and I'm growing more like sweet potatoes and yams so that I can have like cover all over my room, and wow. it's gonna be absolutely lovely and great, and I'm gonna have really clean air in here. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> wow. I love it so much. And then <laughs> let's see. For for me, it's okay. This is a story. So what happened was. I went to get Taco Bell and I was like, I'm just going to get that chicken bowl and get rid of all the stuff that hurts my tummy. And, you know, I've been talking to uh, Alina and Reiko knows my entire history <laughs> of food. Uh, and, you know, a big thing was like maybe not eat high acidity foods because I do have high acidity reaction. Acidity mm -hmm. reactions. Anyways, so I did my best and I said, don't put all this stuff in. And yet I still got my stomach hurt because I forgot that the, the guacamole it's high acidity. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. They put so much lime juice in that. Oh, honey. They truly I'm do. So, so today, I'm just going to have carrots <laughs> and a bottle <laughs> of pie. And this is a uh, blueberry. What is that? How do we word it? Brasilia blueberry. Mm -hmm. So that is my nom of the day. Now, everybody that's watching, let us know what you're having for dinner because I think that's also very fun. And it just, it, food tells a lot about people. That, but it's not like you have to tell us your entire life. It's okay. Just tell us what you're eating. Next. So, <laughs> first topic, we're just going to recap a little bit on who these people are. So, this is the time when you brag about your, your, your specialties in regards to, like, why are you on this show? No pressure, though. <laughs> I kid, a joke. Alina, please, I know that we introduce you as a holistic nutritionist, so in a summarized way to, of describing, what is it that you do? Oh, hey, so I, I wrote notes to, like, be clear on all the questions, but now I'm like, I don't want to look at my page, but um, let's see. Actually, wait. <laughs> well, okay, so Surprise. the reason why I specifically... Um, make the distinction of holistic nutritionist is because generally speaking, when we think of nutrition, we can think of the general macronutrients. How many calories are you getting? How many, how much protein, fats, cut out the fats, you know, this, that. And um, the deeper that I went down the rabbit hole of nutrition, going through school, all the things, the more it was hard to ignore the multifaceted aspects of it how our movement can impact our speaking, how when, you know, our laughter, all these things can impact our vagus nerve, which helps with, you know, the distribution of gastric juices, you know, processed food versus whole foods. Um, like we're going to be talking about today, our mental health and how you can work with a nutritionist, not just for weight loss. And um, also that association with nutrition and working with a nutritionist solely for weight loss and that culture that I'm Ugh. it just makes as a nutritionist it makes your life harder almost um a little bit but anyway that's what I am I'm a holistic nutritionist in that way and then when I work with a client just super like flash I don't know shortened version um I really work on the foundations with them first and I would say unlike even when you go to a conventional um, sort of even like, uh, actually, no, I won't even, I don't want to get into that. I was about to talk about the, our Western medical system and I don't want to poke the bear, <laughs> but, um, generally speaking, when you sit down with me as a holistic nutritionist and a functional nutritional therapy practitioner, which is my specific designation, um, I will want to know every aspect of your health. We'll probably have a one hour conversation. If we're doing a full consultation, I'll send you plenty of paperwork, to really get to know what your health state is um, and to almost act like a detective and look at all of the, di the different symptoms and see from a north to south process what aspect of your digestive tract could be impacting it outside of just, I don't know, you know, I, I, I could keep going, but that's generally what it is. 
Um, and I'm gonna stop there. Okay. It's <laughs> okay. It's like uh, we we could totally okay. poke a bear on another day. So just <laughs> I'm happy. Right. I'm, ha I'm happy with poking metaphorical be bears, not real bears, metaphorical bears. Okay. <laughs> and Raven, what about you? What is your because you, I just, you're my crowned culinary queen. So I don't know, like, <laughs> like, oh, where can we even start, honey? Uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, I have high anxiety um, and very high uh, depression as well. I have gotten, oh, hello, dear. Sorry, somebody brought me a drink. <laughs> um, and I, I have Hashimoto's... Uh, which is an autoimmune disease. Um, it attacks usually your thyroid first, but it can also attack other systems. Um, I just went through a couple of weeks where it felt like my joints were being attacked. So it, I guess it decided to shift into sort of an arthritis-esque uh, phase. And so, yeah, just everything hurt in my knees, sucked. Um, but on top of that, I also had cancer and the particular type of cancer that I had was estrogen sensitive. It produced even more estrogen um, on its own on top of the estrogen I was already normally producing, but it hated it. It was a vicious cycle and it very much affected my uh, ability to function mentally and emotionally uh, day to day. Luckily I had to have a lot of stuff removed, but now I have to be careful uh, reintroducing certain types of foods into my diet because they can cause all those mental issues and whatnot. So yeah, I a lot of times I will use food to help me feel better um, because I'm either missing something in my diet and haven't been paying attention or because I've noticed a shift in my mental state and a lot of times that is tied to the types of food that I'm eating. Okay, yes. No, that, and it's, thank you for for letting us know what's going on. Like it's, I, I know like when we, we've had episodes before when we were talking about like autoimmune diseases and, and how that creates challenges in our new, in our diet, in our daily life. Like it was very insightful to hear your experience and hear how you've been able to try and manage with, with your conditions. So yeah. I'm excited it's, that we get in depth a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then last but not least, Rachel. Mm. <laughs> she's like surprise oh. it's getting, yes. anyways i'm just here hosting and helping that's i'm stephanie my mom told me not to talk with mouthful first of all bear with bear with me guys i have been taking care of my mom like every day straight since march 1st ish i have not conversed in english much so my english is like i've been like Japanese like all day every day for a whole month um the only people that I talk to in English are, are my best friend that lives with us and my husband and doctor is a nurse so I kind of like sorry if I go back and forth with the trust me you're doing thing. fine <laughs> thank you thank you um just like you you know um they were saying um it's all up to individuals one meal plan will totally ruin the other people like um my mother's case she's got she's in remission of stage four cancer she mm -hmm. just had a you know heart attack and angioplasties and Ooh, you goodness. know some people will love like you know for mom um i am super careful so i always peel every tomato take mm -hmm. all the seeds out. Um, I won't give her anything that's inflammatory. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, inflammatory, sorry, there you go. And um, one thing that I talked about today that's in my ingredients, the n very important part of this meal is the polyphenol, rich uh, extra virgin olive oil. It only grows in Morocco desert because mm -hmm. what happens is in Morocco, desert the winter the when it gets cold it's severe when it gets hot it's severe so what happens with the olives they go in the survival mode and when mm. they do they produce this polyphenol and the one that i get i am not a spokesperson for this brand or anything like that but one olive oil that i get it's not cheap 
but mm. I take it as a supplement. I actually drink it every morning, like one teaspoon full. Um, this um, retired cardiologist, uh, sh- he swears that when you do this, no matter, I mean, you cannot definitely, uh, obviously, you cannot go just all out, you know, eating <laughs> sugar and, you know, don't, don't drink white, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, white powder, uh, I mean, flour all day, but. Oh. This really helps your, uh, it's such a huge anti-inflammatory and mm. antioxidant. It is so good that if you just add this in your diet, it really covers a lot of areas of your problem. So you guys might want to look into it. Um, I will send you, Steph, the link after this and you can put it up on the video but i've been doing it my mom's been doing it and it's just really really showing the world of difference Hmm. and yeah i mean you can buy you know 40 dollar bottle of extra virgin olive oil at the store but it would not come close to polyphenol rich extra virgin Hmm. olive oil and also um uh we are talking about um you know uh i think alina was talking about the um you know, uh, I think it was bef- like a month ago or two months ago when we did the Nam Talk together. Um, it really is like, you know, body. She is so right about movement of our, we, no matter how depressed we are, we can't get out of the bed sometimes. It, it is really, it makes a world of difference. Even if you just do this in bed, it's it's like it, it just opens up your diaphragm and then just make the breathe the, a lot like you know uh, a lot of oxygen in your body, and just walk around. You don't overwhelm yourself by thinking that you have to do this in, insane workout for like thirty minutes straight. Even mm-hmm. just go outside and walk around. I mean, gosh, our mind is so strong. It's just you can push ourselves to just go outside and walk around, or just like do the breathing exercise in bed exercise really makes you feel so good after even like five minutes Mm -hmm. so i really encourage that for your mental and physical health yeah definitely getting up moving around getting something to eat even just making Mm -hmm. something to eat yeah getting out of that that cycle of being stuck in one place really helps to get your body up and moving it, I know it's the, mm-hmm. it's the hardest struggle just to get out of that bed in the morning or yeah. take a shower in the morning or whatever. But if you can get that process started, even yeah. if you end up going back to bed a couple hours later, yeah. getting up and, and doing something does help to shift how your yeah. mental uh, state is doing. Right. Or For women, going on. As, you know, we, it raises the serotonin level and it mm-hmm. really, really, we need to keep keep that level up and you it's like why you're I saying, grow things <laughs> my mom's my mom's passion is cooking and so like she goes to the kitchen and she's like she's just walking around and cooking and it just really it's a therapy you know it's so mm-hmm. therapeutic yeah and that was kind of the next question of like how um what was it yeah how is nutrition and wellness critical when it comes to mental health and you've kind of already mentioned it like being able to move and i've been working with alina lately because um you know i i have goals for my wellness entirely and she's been kind enough to help me through this journey that we are that i'm experiencing and you know for to be somebody who's stagnant and works at the computer like 14 hours a day it does like this was one thing she was like go outside for a walk yoga something for like 30 minutes an hour like just start there and that way you'll have more energy and eventually like you know like it's i've i've been doing that i've been trying to walk every day for about half an hour maybe like a couple miles one two miles and you. it's been it's been getting a lot easier to do it's been it, it's been helping me as like mental i'm just i wake up and i'm like let's go for a walk and that's not something i ever said at all during the pandemic because i'm like i don't want to go outside <laughs> real so, talk yeah, yeah. like <laughs> like that and that alone is like a good start you know just get your body moving like Rico said her mother's just going to the kitchen and that's a, that is something to start with so what are um like what are other ways like how would you like 
it's hard to word certain questions because I'm just like, there's, there's so many ways that you can answer this question. So let me try to be as specific as possible. Okay. So if you had a client or if you had a friend or if you experienced like anxiety and depression and things like that, like if they have trouble coming out of their box or if they have trouble just getting out of the bed, like what are some ways that you've been able to, uh, suggest since you know we're not medical professionals like how do you right. suggest to help that person like when if it if, even if it's like food like raven you mentioned that certain ingredients helped you like they made you feel a little more comforted and things like that so mm -hmm. it's it's just an interesting question and I'd, I'd love to hear your 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 input on that so raven would you like to start yeah for me the the most basic thing and it's also the hardest one of the hardest things for me to do um drink a little bit of water when, when you first wake up in the morning, drink a little bit of water because you don't realize how much water you actually are breathing out during the night. So when you wake up, you've got just your cotton mouth and you know, just like, ugh, you're like, ugh, I feel, I feel horrible. I'm just gonna stay in bed. Get up, like drink a, like a quick glass of juice or a, you know, a cup of water or a little bit of tea. Get something in your system to like get it rehydrated it helps to kind of, again, it helps to sort of alleviate that tired feeling that you have when you don't have enough hydration. Um, if you're having a really bad anxiety day, day though, stay away from coffee. <laughs> I admit I am addicted to coffee, but do your best to stay away from highly caffeinated drinks because that can actually end up exacerbating your anxiety and pushing you towards like anxiety attack or panic attack. Um, and when you come down from the caffeine, it exacerbates your depression. <laughs> Things I've learned by trial and error my entire life. <laughs> and look, like, it's just, there are some things that, you know, we might not be able to get to. And so it's all about trial and error. Like what helps, what yeah. doesn't help? What can you avoid? What can you not avoid? Like what is something that you yeah. thirst for? Um, mm -hmm. Alina, uh, please. Oh, yeah. So Everything that Raven just said, I'm just like back here, like nodding, like, let's talk about it. Because first, well, before before I say anything, I want to really highlight that if somebody came to me with depression or anxiety, I would first make sure that they had spoken to a mental health professional and assess whether or not it's within my scope of practice, because my scope of practice does not go beyond a certain point. Um, and even even if it, even if I'm able to help them, I'm always specifically when it comes to mental health, trying to make sure that they are still talking to a mental health professional to confirm that it's okay. Because like you mentioned before, while the, and we can talk about this while uh, our digestive tract is being looked at more and more by neurologists as an extension of our nervous system because of how vital it is with our mental health um, and the production of certain feel good hormones. Um, I'm not a neurologist, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. So I just want to make that first. Anyway, what Raven was mentioning um, specifically with hydration. So for example, with hydration, a lot of people, um, unfortunately, we're not educated on this in, in a large amount um, in school. They're not, they don't know that while we sleep, that is usually our body's time to repair itself, to rebalance the hormones, to really, um, you know, bring in new cells and everything, right? So, and on top of that, if you're a mouth breather, even if you're not at night, you can become dehydrated literally by breathing. So that is why getting hydrated first thing in the morning can actually really help you with your energy levels off the bat. Um, so that's just a, a foundational aspect. And then there was something else that Raven mentioned that I was like, Caffeine. oh, the coffee. Ca yeah, let's talk yeah. about that really quick because <laughs> that, okay, I love caffeine. But, and the thing is, is that with many things in life, with many foods, they can become demonized. But sometimes it's the way that we can use them, utilize them. We can look at swaps. It's never, it's never in your individual, bio-individual bodies, all or nothing, unless you want it to be. Um, and yeah, anyway, but with coffee, what's really interesting about coffee is that caffeine, it stimulates our adrenal glands. So our adrenals, when it's super stimulated, it's like, whoa, they're, they're essentially 
partially <laughs> in charge of our fight or flight oh. mode. So it's like, oh, I'm revved up. Okay. Oh my God. Wait, my blood sugar's down too. Okay. Well, maybe I'm running from a monster and I need to release all of my cortisol until oh. I have ran for 20 miles because that's what our stress hormones are really for. It's for fight or flight, for being active. And like the average American, like anybody around the globe right now, we're sedentary. But even before this, you can be sedentary just working a normal job. Um, because of that, we aren't utilizing that energy. It just builds up and we can it can exacerbate already present anxiety. It can create anxiety. Um, so that's just something to note. I think that everyone kind of knows that, but I'm just trying to explain sort of the processes behind why that can happen. Um, and one of the reasons why, if I do have a client who loves coffee but has that anxiety, I always try to see if they would be interested in green tea because what's interesting about green tea is that it has the caffeine, but it also has something called L-theanine. And L-theanine helps to naturally relax the body. And so it's really cool that they're paired together. So you get that stimulation, but you don't get as much of that anxiety in there. Um, so I want to mention that, but when it comes to in general food, um, food impacting our mental health, two areas that I that I can cover like really quickly because I like there's a whole panel and I don't want to um, talk too much. Um, and then if you want me to expand later, I can. But two areas are one, fatty acids. So fatty acids, specifically the different fats you consume, is incredibly vital for our mental health. Um, yeah. One of the reasons why is because our brain is made up of over 60% fat and our entire body is made up of the food we eat, right? And so if you eat certain fats or certain oils, some of them can be more inflammatory than others. And that inflammation can impact the brain. And there have been studies on systemic inflammation in the body and in the mind that can cause anxiety and depression. So, and again, don't take my word for it. Look this up. There's, there's a lot of articles on this. Um, and uh, a vital or essential nutrient that we need in our diet is omega-3s. Um, and that can be found in fatty fishes, um, salmon, um, and healthier fats also in general, omega-6, three and six can be found in nuts, seeds, legumes. Um, and I just, I think it's, it's crazy to learn about this stuff and then think about the whole fat-free like fad yeah, that happened, horrible. which by the way, was inaccurate and is being disproven. Um, mm -hmm. But fat going fat free or drastically reducing your fat intake has also been associated with impaired brain function because how because of how um, important fatty acids are. So all of that to say, incorporating those foods in your diet, looking at your um, your fat content can be very vital for mental health. And, um, and yeah, so there's that aspect of it. And then the other thing that I'll touch on really quickly is that, uh, how, what percentage is it? It's around 90% of our serotonin, which is, uh, a very abundant and essential, um, neurotransmitter or hormone that's in our body is produced in our gut, in our digestive tract by our gut bacteria. And this is something that is not being talked enough ab about enough, but um, I think it's partially because there's more and more just crazy research coming out about this, which is really cool. And so when with that information, we see that the average American diet can include foods that can feed bad bacteria and lead to something called gut dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in our good and bad bacteria. Um, we can not just process foods, but Foods in general, um, the U.S. right now has <laughs> hardly any, not hardly any, but there aren't as much regulations on the preservatives, on the pesticides, oh. on the chemicals that are in our food. And those things, while they help the corporations keep the food shelf stable and all of these things, how does it impact the consumer's digestive tract? I don't know. Maybe we should like talk about, you know. So anyway, I, I could go on and on, but all of that to say... Um, a way that we can also help our mental health is through supporting our gut bacteria. That can be done by um, eating uh, probiotics and prebiotics. Um, I won't go into all of them right now, but um, I'll say really quickly that fermented foods, especially going back to being bio-individual, looking at your own health, your own lineage, if possible, even your parents, what are those fermented foods? Most cultures had their own fermented foods and those are abundant in good bacteria. 
Um, and so, and a lot of these health and wellness corporations, they want to be like, yeah, you need to improve your gut. So like pay $80 for my probiotic. And more research is coming out showing that these bacteria sometimes don't even populate. I won't even, let me stop. Okay, I'm not even gonna go into that. But all that to say, <laughs> an approachable way to, to start is considering fermented foods, if that is right for your digestive tract and considering pro prebiotics, which are basically food. Prebiotics are food. They're just food that have certain fibers that feed the good bacteria. And most of us are already eating them. It's just that they're not as profitable. So these corporations aren't like, oh yeah, you know, the super special prebiotic. Anyway, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yep, and, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> like diet fads is definitely a topic that we want to touch on yeah. in, in the future. So, I mean, I'm just saying like, it's not okay, the end of the world. Cool. We, we we got we got fat, the time for fat it. free fat free is one of the worst things you could do yeah absolutely oh yeah it, and i will so just funny say... uh, we were, uh alina was talking about the l-theanine because when i can't here's the health yeah. here and it has to be sun theanine or i think it's fake if you're sub supplementing it i just learned that like a while ago but Anyway, um, I don't know if you guys ever follow my Insta or Facebook, but I just became a certified teacher for Japanese tea ceremony. My mother is an associate, uh, associate yes. professor oh, yeah, yeah. for tea ceremony with the green tea. So we learned so much about the uh, matcha. It's really, really high in uh, L-theanine. And we are talking about the caffeine and everything. Um, it is so true. Like it is, it really if we, if we want to do everything with food and what God has planted on the planet, we really can. I mean, seriously, like my mom, when her blood pressure goes down to, uh, too low, I mean, because she just got the stents put in, it is okay to have the low blood pressure, but, you know, below 110, below 60 is not healthy Ooh, especially for no. my age and it also it has a lot to do with age groups it's like you know a lot of cookie cutter thing yeah. is really bs it's just really individual and the age and you know our lifestyle and everything so i'll give her a shot of just a little bit of coffee and it mm -hmm. goes back up to 128 30 over 65 70 which is good for my mother's age and also caffeine uh if she needs to calm down at night well i'll make her a bowl of matcha because of the l theanine theanine in it and it just calms her down and also i wanted to talk about i think we talked about this last time but magnesium how important magnesium mm -hmm. is in our diet and if you don't want to do the supplement then i always soak almonds overnight raw almonds overnight in water just water and in the morning, I peel the 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 skin of the arm because it's so high in uh, uh, t uh, what's the name of the skin? T uh, shoot, tannins? Huh? Is it tannic? Tannin or tannin or something. It it's yeah. the uh, what blocks the nutrients from almonds to absorb into your body. So if oh, you okay. peel it. It just you can get a lot of omega three because we are um we found like recently there's a data uh, that came out that people are more people have more uh, omega six than three in our bodies lately like mm -hmm. walnuts right walnuts are great but has it's really high in omega six um three are uh, you can get that from almonds and just like we were saying the uh, uh, sockeye salmon cod sardines has a lot of omega macro. 3 yes exactly and we just you know macro is great it's just a high in mercury we just want to sometimes stay away yeah like, no that's that's, that's an occasional not a, exactly. not an every day but it's really good though and then so uh yeah we can do a lot with food and um, actually, magnesium is known to um, uh, shut down the GABA in your brain. So when you have too much GABA going, you cannot shut down your brain. So at night, I'm kind of like me. I think, 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 and I'm just always thinking. I cannot shut myself off. So I take about 170 milligrams of 
magnesium and it not mm -hmm. only calms my brain down because just like you know saying brain is a muscle and mm -hmm. i need to like <laughs> really calm that stuff down and then also regulate regulate you <laughs> regulate <Yeah>. you <laughs> see mm -hmm. i've been speaking japanese <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're you're absolutely not, right. Trace, trace minerals are a huge thing, and <laughs> if you're if you're lacking in in your trace minerals, yeah. it, it can have a definite uh, impact on on your system. And yeah, no, I I learned the hard way though that caffeine from coffee jacks up your blood pressure because they wanted to classify me as hypertensive. I don't like going to doctors. It they just make me really really tense. But in the morning, I'd be downing a big cup of coffee, then going into the doctor, and they're like, are you okay? Because you seem to be hypertensive. This seems really high. I'm like, it's not that high, and it's normal for me. And they're like, that's that that's not, are you, what's going on? I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm like. Let, let me come back in a couple of days. And I, I went off of, you know, coffee for a couple of days and came back and they're like, oh my God, your blood pressure is great. Bro. Wait, it was really high last time. Oh. I'm like, yeah, I found out I shouldn't be drinking coffee before I come to see you guys because y'all make me nervous. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Also, but yeah, I need like, to remember I, I, not to pee before I go see my doctor. So. They always I, want you to pee in a cup, right? I was, going to, um, I was going to mention that I'm not going to sit here as somebody who only knows, I would say, one and a half languages because I'm not good with Spanish and then be like, hey, you bilingual person who's highly <laughs> intelligent and like able to switch back and forth seamlessly. You're not doing it perfectly. Like, never <laughs> apologize, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I can, I can remember like two phrases in French. <laughs> Neither one of them mean much. Right. It's like it's okay. Like je, je pedale ma bicyclette dans la rue and uh, uh, je peux quatre ans française dans ma lise. So I took basically the first one is I pedaled my bike in yogurt, and the other one is I took four years of French in high school. <laughs> yeah, trust me, you're doing fabulous. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, you know, I, I just want to add one thing yeah. uh, because mm -hmm. we talked about the health, the professional or mental health professional. I did work with the um, specialist, suicide specialist, actually. His name is Dr. Mark Goldston. My um, partner, writing partner, Frank Kilpatrick and I um, did this um, thing called uh, documentary called suicide prevention documentary called Stay, Al Stay Alive. Um, our special guest, the main guy that we had in the uh, video is Kevin Hines, who jumped from Golden Gate Bridge and survived. Oh, yeah. And he is an amazing motivational speaker. I mean, just a one whole day spending with them changed my outlook about suicide because I am from a country who where the suicide rate is the highest, one of the highest in the world, Japan. Mm -hmm. We have a forest that people go to to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we are very susceptible to, like, ending our lives. It's like, kind of like trend. It's so sad. It's so sad. But anyway, but um, I really, really, uh, Mark Goldston is on uh, Twitter, Facebook. Um, he is a, I think he has like a weekly um, a chat thing that you can log on to and if you are ever contemplating suicide or you are suicidal you have a friend or two who are suicidal your family members I completely recommend that you check him out he is a very in person like very hands on it's like, uh, he's retired now but he was for 30 years the specialist and he has never lost his client. So mm. he's a really good guy to remember or write down. Yeah, I just I just put uh, the Stay Alive Suicide Prevention documentary website Thank in you. the comments. So Thank if people so are curious. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. We did get comments. Black Dog comments said, yep, never drink coffee before a doctor visit. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Unless you want to kind of play with the play prank on them 
Oh, no. <laughs> What's wrong? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just have palpitations. <laughs> they God. For me, yeah. anyway, the copay is too much to even mess around. Like, give oh, me. Yeah. I, I need right. like two right. sessions worth. <laughs> mm. Yes. No. Uh, you know, Alina, I have a question for you. So my mother has yeah. adrenal gland insufficiency. Mm. And she takes, she, it, she developed a lot of disease from cancer drugs. Um, mm. And she takes hydrocortisone um, every day. And she went from 15 milligram down to 10 milligram. Um, but, you know, we are about to do another cortisol uh, test. Um, but what were you saying about the caffeine with the coffee with the adrenal gland? Oh, so. something, yeah. Yeah, so coffee can be a stimulant for the adrenal glands. Um, but when it is taken or drinking in excess, we can get adrenal fatigue from that, where it's essentially been overworked every day. Um, and that's why I kind of make that analogy that cortisol can almost be like uh, the canary in the coal mine, kind of being like, hey, you should be worried today. That's why you need to be alert. Um, but when it comes to your wow, mother, I've been murdering my canary. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's in excess, right? Like, or without taking breaks and and things like that. And also going back to everyone being having an individual chemistry and in response to things. Um, some people are more sensitive than others. There's mm. a whole host of things. So but um, like caffeine, it doesn't have to be coffee, but caffeine, like so matcha. Um, be- yes, yeah, so matcha. But when it comes to your mom, because mm she is is working with uh doctors on that because she is taking specific medications i don't work with clients with who are usually on that level yeah. and so i can't really give any specific recommendations for her in that way i can only speak to the benefits that they can offer but right. you know her best <laughs> yeah. um and, you know, and her practice sure. because she feels better with coffee I mean, she she has she does not drink it all the time. Be- on, only when she her blood pressure drops significantly, she mm-hmm. will have a sip. And oh my gosh, you guys cannot drink coffee that she makes. It's so watered down. <laughs> it's like oh, cafe americano. Milligram of coffee, caffeine in it. She she's been that way since she was a, a long time ago. It has nothing to do with her heart disease, but she loves these watered down like. You know, it was your she likes her coffee like she likes her tea. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, you know, I would, I, I just, it just interested me when you were talking about the cortisol level and the, um, I, I mean, adrenal glands stimulant, you know, the coffee mm-hmm. and stuff. I, it, it's really mm-hmm. like I'm gonna look into that even with because I, my goal is for her to just cut down on all medication. It just goes to aspirin. Just go down to aspirin at all. Mm. And she's taking statin right now, even though she's 99% vegan. Um, so mm. I talked to doctor. I am doctor's biggest nightmare. I talk to them like I have to. <laughs> you, I text them. You, you know, know what? Them. Having an advocate in a doctor's office and in the hospital is a deep blessing sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of the time, because the reality is that a lot of doctors, nurses, they're all so well-intentioned. They want to help you, but sometimes wow. they're overworked. And so being yes. there and offering reminders and really advocating what her objective is, which yes. it sounds like working off of these things and finding balance. Exactly. That's a valid thing to want to ask for, but getting their feedback who and they know more about the adrenals is very important. But it doesn't hurt to do that research and even come with, um, I, I love PubMed. I highly recommend going on PubMed. A lot of um, health blogs, you know, while they're very well intentioned, they're not doctors. And sometimes they do refer to peer reviewed medical articles. But there is an abundance of peer reviewed medical articles on coffee and adrenals. And you can actually type those keywords in and really look into what has been researched into it. And and again, that's PubMed. Um, And I believe it's .gov. But um, yeah, it'll, it'll, it's okay. very interesting. It, it, it's really yeah, fun to I dive into those. Into it once. You, you know, I totally completely forgot about Thank you so much. I'm just definitely going to go to that. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, very you know, welcome. My father was a doctor, so I completely understand like all the nurses. They were like robotic sometimes. They, they do, you know, they learn this much and they concentrate and focus on this much. Anything mm-hmm. other than that, they 
won't even want to touch it sometimes. And mm. so I think it is really, really important to be proactive and really mm -hmm. do your own research. And I, you know, because in, at the end of the day, it's us and mm -hmm. it's our body, it's our loved one's body. And if we screw up, then it's nobody's else, nobody else's fault, but ours. And, you know, it's, we, we are the best caretaker for our loved ones. We mm -hmm. suck when it comes to ourselves <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I really appreciate it that I am really, because of um, tonight, I am going to take a look at the uh, adrenal glands, stimulant and the caffeine mm -hmm. issues. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Yay. Yeah. And we're, we're at the four minute mark, but oh, I, wow. I did want to conclude like a summary, um, a little bit about with, you know, like as everybody's already mentioned, like getting to sleep and drinking water, what, what again are those things that have helped you or have helped people that you know, when it comes to like anxiety and depression and insomnia, what are some things that you, that you've noticed work really well for them? And again, everybody watching, this is not like... <laughs> I'm watching or listening. If this is not, we are not medical professionals. We only say this as like from experience and doing our own homework. So take it with a grain of salt. Yes. As the, the gesture. In it. Yeah. <laughs> These are more just conversations about things to do further research into yes. or bring yeah. up with your medical professional. Yes. yes. So really, yeah. Uh, Reiko, yeah. if you would like to sum up what you think, what you've felt worked best with your situations and your experience first i really encourage people to stay away from university of google i see this all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god yeah it yeah. depresses me so much sometimes i mean gosh seriously like if you if getting the information like club med from like your you know very uh resourceful friends like alina and you know getting all those likes that's that's great you know and and oh um i i do want to ask you something raven uh, uh, after the show about oh, yeah, the definitely. baking baking of the uh, vegan uh, i'll tell you about it because we only have three minutes okay um but mother got diagnosed with stage four uh, lung cancer with the met the, the brain um I I thought I was going to lose it. My therapist said, you know, either heart psych, psychotropic drugs or dog. <laughs> I got the dog. <laughs> I didn't want to OD myself, and you know, but um, magnesium really truly helps me and movement of the body, like exercising. I beat my ass every morning to get up just to even put, get on the elliptical and do 10, 20 minutes, just just that. But when I'm reading, responding somebody on Facebook or I just you a lot of people do it on the bed. I said, if I'm going to spend 20 minutes doing this on the bed, then I'm just going to do I'm just going to read this on the elliptical. So I I really believe in magnesium and exercise and then especially uh, and then bring fat and just like Raven and Melina bring good fat into your diet. Mm -hmm. It burns bad fat anyway. We need mm. fat to burn, burn fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those two, oh, three, whatever. Sorry. Okay. Raven, your turn. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was to say Raven. <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay. Since she passed it to me, for me, uh, it's a lot of um, kind of stepping away from the processed foods only because they tend to be higher in sodiums and higher in, in, in monosaccharides, easily stored sugars and whatnot. And the ups and downs can really mess with your mental state. So if you can try to make yourself something with just your basic ingredients, like if you can pronounce it, eat it. <laughs> if you have trouble pronouncing it or it's in Latin, you might want to take a step back from it. <laughs> You know, make sure you, of course, make sure you're hydrated, but like, just try and eat some simple foods, even if it's just having some fruits and vegetables, run with it. It helps to get you what you need, helps to get you going and, you know, just try your best. And it's okay if you don't make everything perfect that day, like next day, try again, next meal, try again. It's okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And Alina. First off, I I think that what Raven 
just said is probably one of the most important aspects of of nutrition incorporating, uh, you know, having a relationship with our mental health, our blood sugar, our blood sugar. We can have the, you know, whether it's processed food or straight sugar, um, any, any, for example, you know, processed flour, whatever is higher on the glycemic index, essentially things that can be processed in sugar immediately or faster, those can cause blood sugar spikes. Mm -hmm. And while we feel high when the blood sugar is high, we can feel low when we can feel that crash once the insulin comes in and cleans up all the sugar. And Mm -hmm. that can contribute to our mental health, I think a lot more than a lot of people know. And unfortunately, like I mentioned in the beginning, these foundational things, I feel uh, these foundational things are not talked about enough. A lot of us, I don't know about y'all, but I did not have a cohesive health class in high school or junior high or anything. Um, and so it's very understandable that a lot of us don't understand this or don't didn't realize that it could impact our mental health. And then we continue on with certain habits that we think are fine. And then we're like, whoa, I am in this intense state. And I, and then it, like summarize quickly some foundational things, um, consistent meals, making sure that you're eating preferably whole, whole, um, whole grains if you can that aren't too processed because that'll prevent the blood sugar spikes as well. Incorporating your protein because amino acids, we didn't even talk about it, are vital for our mental health. Oh, um, yeah. Along with minerals, trace minerals used to be abundant in our food because of the way that we factory farm, because of the way that we filter our water, which another way that we used to get it, our ancestors did. We as Americans, I believe over 70% of Americans are deficient in magnesium alone. And then we have over a hundred trace minerals that nobody's talking about for some reason, but trace minerals are essentially kind of the people who come in before the water and the nutrients and they say hey this is what you're supposed to do hey body this is what you're supposed to do with the nutrients hey body this is supposed this is where you're supposed to put the water and if you don't have the minerals the water goes straight through you and you're like oh i just can't stay hydrated Uh, i don't know and it's not your fault it's because we didn't talk about it so pro you know the macronutrients the protein the carbohydrates the fats but really emphasizing the protein and the fats Mm -hmm. to have a consistent blood sugar throughout the day. Um, The minerals, um, sun exposure, we didn't even talk about, but vitamin D is a precursor to melatonin. Melatonin we need for deep sleep. That deep sleep we need for hormone balance. Vitamin D is a precursor to a lot of um, different hormones that also help with our mood. So when you can, getting outside, that contributes to seasonal affect disorder because we don't have the vitamin D. So getting outside when you can, um, understanding that movement, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but understanding that also movement is not just about weight loss. Movement doesn't need to be like, um, you know what, I'm not even gonna move today because if I'm gonna move, then it has to be an hour long, you know, high intensity interval training. No, it does not. Even 10 minutes of walking has been studied to impact our digestive tract, our mood, so many things. So it does not need to be end all be all. Um, Hydration, absolutely. What was the other thing? I don't know. I'm going to stop there. But those, (laughs) but my general point, sorry, very last thing. (laughs) I just really want to reiterate these foundational things. If we can look at this, research it, what these foundational things are, we can really start to tweak them, see what works for us, rather than putting Mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on us or waiting until it gets worse. And then I'm going to be real, going to a practitioner who we know by research, usually on average, doctors only have four hours of nutrition education. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So they know a lot, but... Do they, do they know a lot of these foundational things that can impact our mental health as well to offer that as, you know what I mean? Anyway, okay, yeah. so I'm just saying that. <laughs> Be your own best advocate, do that research, don't take my word for it. Okay, that's it. Can I add to that? I went, I to, I went, I, I ran to the kitchen to get this, to add to Alina. Mm. This is the best trace minerals and oxygen thing that you can put in Ooh. the water that I found. Mm. And then for you vegans, just like he, she was saying, we need branched chain amino acid, especially vegans. We can't get the complete protein all the time. Rice and rice and beans are complete protein, by the way. So that's why, you know, miso soup and rice, beans and rice, great. But um, this is the cleanest branched chain amino acid that I can find. It's called Clean BCAA, and it tastes amazing. I know this mm. is sub, these are supplements, but especially vegans, um, you want mm-hmm. to really have amino acid 
in your body that that you're not getting from the meat and i really recommend those too i can send you the name so you can link it but it's it's really what what she said is really important and diabetes i grew up with diabetes diabetics all my life including my dog i used to shoot the dog three times a day I would go party and I have to come. It's like, I have to go shoot the dog. I would be on stage and say, hey, thank you for coming. I have to go shoot the dog. I don't know if you remember that oh stuff. God. But anyways, um, <laughs> so yes, blood sugar level. Oh my gosh, it's so, oh, it affects our brain so much. And you're completely correct. <laughs> Raven. Right? Yeah, that's why I eat even small increments so of meal five times, four times a day to keep the blood sugar even. It's mm-hmm. so important. Carrots mm-hmm. are high glycemic, uh, high glycemic vegetables. So I know you're eating that right now, but it is fiber, very much uh, a lot of fiber. So it's okay. Oh, um, I need a poop. Uh, blueberries are good. It's low glycemic, <laughs> even though it, you, people think it's, you know, blueberries are high glycemic. It's not. So you can even eat yeah. before you go to bed. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about blueberries with fiber. The blueberries, oh. the berries. <laughs> Damn it. So, yeah. No, be, being aware of what you take in has a, a larger overall impact. So start looking at what you're taking in to see maybe yeah. where you're not getting enough. Yes. I'm sorry I had to run to the kitchen because I was like so inspired. <laughs> no, that's okay. But this this is this is the conclusion oh. portion so i want to say like thank you so much raven alina and and reiko for for taking time again and being on the show to break it down a little bit about wellness and nutrition and how like such small you know like people will be like oh walking eh, no big deal or like oh water no big deal like it's it does make a difference and i will say like personally being told about like water and if you know the water lacks a certain nutri- nutrient alina i know you you made me you gave me my homework so i got it <laughs> like what was it himalayan pink salt you said to put in water or just like kosher sea salt putting it in water it'll provide you with certain chemicals that you know clean purified water will lack that actually helps you with what's going on in your body so yeah like and as you mentioned, it doesn't have to be super hard exercise. It doesn't have to be like strenuous. If you want to blast some music and just dance around your house all day, that is movement. That is good. Yeah. But again, take this as a grain of salt. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> thank you so much to Reiko, Alina, and Raven for being on the show. Thank you to everybody watching. Um, I, I will say, <laughs> if you are in a crisis, please reach out to your close friends, your family, your your medical or your therapist the the people that are important or you know reach out to the national suicide prevention lifeline it is 1-800-273-8255 and if you would like to donate to them please check out their website and donate to suicide prevention lifeline.org slash donate (sighs) we'll see i i will see all the viewers again on sunday for basic brunches it's going to be a lot of fun we are going to be talking about some controversial topics but also some fun nerdy things but thank you again for tuning in thank you to the three of you again for being on the show tell us where we can find you or if you have a shout out please <laughs> raven where, where can people see, see you because i know it's a lot of places uh yes i am dame red bento type that in hopefully i'll be starting to do some fish streams with all my different uh fish and aquaponics going on um i'm also i and a bunch of other places. But yeah, Dame Red Bento, type it on in. Come find me. I'd love to hear from you. Yay. And of course, it comes to me. It's tannins. On tannins. The almond yeah. tannins. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> please, Reiko, <laughs> you tell us where, where we can find you. Where, where can I? Wait, wait are we what? still on? Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> concluding. <laughs> we're concluding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You're good. Uh, where can you find me? Where yes. I live? No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> social media online. Oh, social media. <laughs> Lolita Black Music on Instagram. Reiko Dig, as in Dig Jelly, on Facebook. Reiko Dig or Lolita Dark, Lolita Dark Music on Instagram. Yay. And then Yay. Alina. Um, uh, so, yeah, all Instagram is Hey Alina Alive. Um, my name is spelled A L I N A. Um, and then, um, Alina alive on YouTube. I primarily actually talk about (laughs) 
completely different than this. Um, different moon phases and basically astrology readings, depending on the full. Um, I, I, I have um, in Astrology Planner, where essentially, if you're really into that stuff, it shows the moon phases for the entire calendar year, along with the transits and uh, seasonal foods and wellness guide things. So we can stay aligned with nature and the cosmos rather than capitalism. <laughs> anyway. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And it's, it's super, super awesome. Check it out. Check out our website. It's, it's great. Yeah. You, you won't be disappointed. And then you can follow me on my Instagram. You can follow non-talk network on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and here on Twitch. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. <laughs> but until next time, everybody, thank you so much. Have a nomorific day. And, uh, yeah, bye! Bye!